Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use HTMX to your timely based Spring Boot application. HTMX gives you access to Ajax, CSS transition, WebSocket and server send event directly into your HTML. So let's see how we can add this feature to your Spring Boot application. So first we're going to create a Spring Boot application by going to start with Spring Boot.io. Select your flavor, I'm going to use Gradle and Kotlin and I need three dependencies, web, timely and dev tools. This is an optional dependency, you can have it, you can not have it up to you. Generate the project and open it with your favorite IDE. I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA, but you can use any other IDE. So by default, when you create the project, you'll get the builder cradle like this. Uh, and I just added this one dependency over here uh, for HTMX. And also in here, this is the basic main application, uh, main class you get. Uh, to save some time, I added some controller and some views already. I don't want to write all of this stuff uh, in this tutorial as it is not in the scope of this tutorial. These are like normal uh, HTML and uh, time leaf code. Also here are some controller. Uh, the home controller is just returns in home page. So let's look at the home page. Again, it's a basic normal HTML page. Uh, only thing added over here is this HTMX, uh, JS, which you can get from the HTMX org and just scroll down and you'll get it from here uh and again yeah some controller uh some other controller like this rest controller uh these are standard uh spring boot stuff mvc stuff uh if you're familiar with it good if not i have other videos where you can get more details about it, what i'm doing over here uh giving you a short summary it's just a endpoint taking an input name and uh, seeing if it is less than three then it returns invalid input and here it's just adding a new user based on the user it gets for now i'm setting this user object over here but you'll probably uh, use it in a database or something i'm not going to detail into the database part uh just for now it's just going to add uh, whenever i'm going to create a new user it's gonna, just going to add it over here and here again some form uh that's just going to take the input of a net user and save it in the database and user list uh, given a user's object it's just going to rotate over this and show the result okay so now let's run the application and see what it shows initially if we go to localhost and run it we'll see this hello HTMX basic stuff now again let's go to this form and just copy it and put it in the form.html and we'll go back and go to the user list copy this part as well and put it over here as well so if i refresh the project and go to the browser we see the form and the fields uh, so if we go to the controller over here you'll see from here it's i'm just passing with this model attribute just passing the user list and that's what populating this list basic spring mbc stuff we haven't done anything to HTMX yet. So let's do some HTMX part. For example, uh, to show this, as you have already seen in the home.html, I am adding this div over here, then another div over here, and more and more stuff are going to be added into this file. So it would be nice if, like this file that I have already created, it would be nice to just put these components, uh, you can call it like these components into separate file and just tag it in here somehow. So for that reason, HTMX is a good option. Let's see how you can do that uh, with HTMX along with many other things that HTMX provides. So for now, first let's delete all of this stuff, create a div where we're going to show the form. And to do that, to add this HTMX, we define this HX attribute with uh, a trigger this trigger it says when we should show this so it when the page loads we should show this so that attribute value is load and how it's going to get so we have created this view controller and as you can see i mean you already know if, uh, that from a controller normal controller if you call it an endpoint then it returns a corresponding view in this case this uh, view that we have already created in here so going back now just copy this endpoint into the home with hx get and this create user form and we run the application now if we go to the browser and refresh we see our form is showing up we can do the same for the user list just change it to the user list uh, so here if we go to this user list it returns this user list do that 
create our application go to the browser refresh the page like before we get both our form and the list of users now it's a lot nicer than before where we had like all of the code over here now it's like component based react type uh component based solution where you can put whatever you need and refer it from another place so it's really nice next let's say we want to add some validation over here for example if the username is less than uh three characters we want to show invalid input so for that it's really easy go to this create user form over here again we need to mention the trigger there are many trigger like uh, on click on change so in this case we're going to use change so when you go from this to any other field it's going to be called this trigger and what happens when executed we call a post with our rest endpoint api slash users slash validate name so it's going to get this name by this name attribute in the back end standard spring stuff and returns uh, invalid input if it's less than three otherwise returns nothing so let's rerun the application go to the browser and refresh the page and refresh the console also now if we put something you will see it's making a call and it's returning invalid input and if we do another then you will see it's making another call but this time it's not returning anything there's no response data but we want to show this over here so how do we show that let's go back to the html here we can mention the target where uh, we are going to show the result of this so we can set the target with hx target and we can we want to show this over here we're so going to mention this id and the target so since it's id put hashtag and we also want to say that where it's going to show it's going to show inside this span so to just say that we say hx swap in our html so this is the default behavior we don't actually have to mention it but you'll see some benefit of it later on yeah with that let's read on the application refresh the page and this time if i put something it makes the call but it's not showing because i put a small mistake hx target let's rerun the application refresh the page and put two character and it's showing invalid input again if i put three character it goes away so nice validation next let's see how we can submit the form so for this we need to just we can just say the form uh post as with the submits uh, it's going to trigger this uh, on submit event we don't need to actually mention this trigger over here so the endpoint for that is just this and we also okay enough let's, with that let's just run the application and put the proper name and location and submit now if you see that it going into the back end and returning the data as uh, i have done in the rest controller it's adding to the list and just returning the same object uh, but it replacing this form which is not nice i want to add uh, keep this form but add this uh, newly added field in the bottom of this list so how to do that so to do that first of all we need to put this hx swap to none so this tells okay you do this request but don't do anything with the result let's see how it looks so this time it submitted the form it got the result back and you can see the result but the form hasn't changed so that's nice now let's see how we can add it in the bottom one other thing i want to show over here is in the create form uh, if you see this uh, in the home if you see this endpoint that we have mentioned so if we directly go to this endpoint you'll see this form which is not nice we don't want to show the user this form like this it should be always part of the main only and not should not be separately shown like that so how to stop that so to stop that it's really easy go to your view controller 
where you are returning this view add one annotation which is hx request and refresh the application restart and this time if you refresh then you'll see this is not showing in the browser anymore but when you go back to the home it will show only over there so that's how we can stop this view from independently showing in the browser okay back to the point where we want to add this uh, newly added user in the bottom over here so to do that we need to go to the rest controller and in here we need to say what we want to do so when this user is created we want to refer, uh, trigger another event in this case let's give it a name like refresh means a list something like that and we can catch this list in the front end with this trigger so when we have multiple trigger we can uh, add it with a comma and since it says server generated event to catch it we also need to add this from body here as well so with this let's read on the server go to the browser refresh the page and now if we add a new user when you submit we directly immediately see it over here that's nice now let's say this operation this validation operation is not very fast so this uh, currently it's showing immediately but for some reason this is not going to show immediately it's doing some other stuff and it's taking some time so when this happens we want to sh so show some loading uh, so that user knows okay something is happening so let's just show it over here by going to the rest controller and adding a slip like threaded slip we run the application go to the browser and refresh now i mean we are coming over here uh, but it's not showing anything uh, it will wait for five seconds then it will show uh, user doesn't know what's happening to show uh, user uh, what's happening like five seconds that okay something is happening on the server maybe we can show some indicator we already have this indicator over here uh, but it's not currently showing to show that we can add another HTMS attribute which is indicator and the uh, name of the indicator in this case ID and this class name must be HTMS indicator okay with that let's again Read on the application, refresh the page, and now if we put something, and you can see this loading. So it, after five seconds, it's gonna go away and show the error. So if it's more than two, it's gonna do this validation again, and then after five seconds, it's just gonna go away as it meets the requirement. So that's how we can show this indicator. Now let's remove this five second delay for now. Finally, uh, what I want to do uh, is when I click I want to show the details of this user in a separate div. So let's do that. For that, first we need to add a div uh, where we are going to show this. Let's add a div. Add some line break. And add a div like uh, ID user details, something like this. And that's all we need over here. And we, again, I already created this uh, user details HTML, which is going to show in here. So for that, we need to run a trigger over here in the user list in the ID. Again, first the trigger. In this case, the trigger is click. So when it clicks, I need to make a HTTP call. It's going to be a get and the endpoint. But in this case, it's not going to be a normal endpoint. It's going to have the endpoint that we have created in the rest controller. Uh, sorry, in the view controller. This views slash. Sorry view slash user uh, by id user id but this user is, is dynamic so for that this hx dash get is not going to work 
for that we need to use ajax clone and here we're gonna use a special character and use this user id and add the dollar sign also mention where it's going to show so like before ajax target the id that we mentioned over here which is user details Let's put that, read on the application, go to the browser, refresh the page, and now if we click, nothing is happening because we need to add the hashtag. I forgot to add that. Let's read on the application, refresh the page, click on it. Now we see the ID or user details. And this works also for the newly added user as well. And click on the ID and it shows this ID user details. So that's it. Uh, that's the basic of HTMX. We have done a lot of Ajax all over here without writing any JavaScript. So that's it. That's all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment below. I will upload this code in the GitHub and the link will be posted on the video description. That's all. Have a nice day. Bye bye.